Hi everybody, it's Lee at SignsNow Headquarters with the first of two videos today talking about path operations from within Illustrator. Um, give you some quick tips and tricks to allow you to do some really quick things using paths to make your artwork just a little bit better. So I have an incredibly ugly logo here, but it actually demonstrates a couple of things for us as far as path operations. First thing that we see here, I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out. First thing that we see here is this beautiful Industry Corp type here. Um, right now, all of these letters, you can see it's just text. And if I were to go ahead and cut this as vinyl, if I, if I wanted to work with it uh, any way other than, than printing it, the problem I have is that all of my letters overlap, which means that everywhere that there is an overlap, I would actually get little cuts here. And I don't want that. I want this to be treated as one shape, or actually in the case of the eye over here, I want it as two separate shapes, right? Uh, but I do want it as two shapes, not each individual letter. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go over here to type and create outlines. Okay, and now you can actually see that I have these overlaps right here. That's no good. That's going to cause problems later on down the road. I don't necessarily want that. So a lot of you might have seen this but not necessarily used it and that is the Pathfinder filter. If you don't have it up on screen you can just go to Window and you should see Pathfinder there. Turn that on and somewhere on your screen you'll see Pathfinder. I have all my types selected right now and I'm going to show you a couple of things. First of all I will point out I am on a Macintosh and I am using Illustrator CS4. If you're on a PC uh, the keystrokes will be a little bit different. We're going to use Alt and Option interchangeably. Uh, but the big difference here is I'm going to use this one right here, which is the Unite, which is going to weld all of these shapes together. And the Unite filter in CS4 works backwards from what it did in CS3. And what I mean by that is when I click on this in CS3 or earlier, it will create a shape that appears as one shape, but it will actually keep all of the little cuts there for you. All of these little jobs right here will actually stay there. Uh, we don't want that, obviously. So in CS3 or earlier, I'll give you a couple of different instructions here. In CS4, I'm just going to push this button, and you can see that now I actually have one complete shape all the way across. In CS3, what I would have to do is either at this point click the Expand button, which would show up, or I can just hit either the Alt or Option button as I initially click this, and that'll do the same thing. Uh, let me show you what'll happen if you don't. It see it, it still keeps the shapes there. Uh, not really sure why that does that in in CS4. Why that's even an option anymore, but just something to be aware of. So now I actually have a discrete shape. So that's that's nice. When I go to cut this, it will actually be one contiguous path here, plus the eye, as I said earlier. The other thing that, that, we, uh, that we notice is that if I, let me zoom in on this path right here. If I click on this path, let me drag this path. If I click on this path right now, this blue line right here, again, if I were cutting vinyl, this is the cut line. This is all I would have. All right, lines have no inherent thickness. That's just something that Illustrator does. So if I actually want to cut here and cut there so that I'll end up with, two separate lines there. What I can do is if I go to Object, Path, and I can choose Outline Stroke. And now you can see that it's actually two separate paths. So it's taken my line. So I don't have any stroke weight on this anymore. You can see I don't have a stroke. All right, this is just, it's a, it's a fill and a fill. It's a, it's a compound path that have been created together. All right, so nice way of, of locking in a path and making sure that my lines do cut properly. Last thing I want to show you in this quick video is a couple of other things with the Pathfinder. Um, path operations. We already did one of them, which is this Unite. Think of Pathfinder as um, uh, mathematical operation on shapes. So what I did right here, when I, when I selected all of these and then clicked on this, was I actually added the shapes together. Well, I can also subtract shapes. And what I mean by that, if I click on two shapes and then click this guy right here, which is going to subtract the front shape, 
what's going to happen is the blue circle is actually going to knock out the green square behind it. Click on that and it's now taken a bite out of it. By the same token, I have other options here. I can look at just where the two shapes intersect. If I click on this, just where the two shapes intersect, uh, it'll create that. Or this is one that I use actually quite a bit. It's the divide filter. I click on divide and it doesn't look like it's really done much of anything. But if I go now to ungroup, I can actually, each of these shapes is different. So it's actually created this shape, this shape, and this shape separately. Um, so it's a, it's a nice way of, of um, making complex shapes by using simple shapes. All right? That's really what the Pathfinder excels at. So that's the first video that I have for you. I have another video uh, doing um, decal cutting. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, if you have any questions, you know how to get in touch with me.